Hey everybody, we're here at Swamp Fest, and it's kind of a reunion for me because I found Alex the Pack, my buddy. How's and going? last time we saw Alex, he talked about his was that mid school? What era would you say that was? Your bikes? Um, mid school and old school. Yeah. So we did a tour of all his mid and old school bikes, and when I met him, he was talking about you'd made the frame you were riding. That's correct. And is this the same one still? Yep. Okay, so. Since then, he's made several other frames. I kind of just wanted to learn more about all this. So first of all, can you just give me the rundown on like what you got going on? This was not supposed to be ridden. I thought building a frame in, would be, I'm not saying it's easy, but I thought it would be a learning curve. And when this one came together, it really was just supposed to go together and not really be ridden. And then it went together Great. So I was obviously riding it now, but it's, I couldn't find anything with geometry that I like because I have a bad knee. So I, my top tube hits it, but I like a trail style frame, but they're all tall. So this is all weird numbers because I like odd numbers, but it's 7.875 standover, 11.5 bottom bracket, 20.875 top tube, and 14. 0.125 slam rear end and I like the older a lot of the older frames like I sort of paid a little homage to the McNeil Rubin with the Pierce top tube but I went a little flatter in the back sort of like the STA 500 and then I like the old school looking wishbones so I put a wishbone on there and I I hate on my bike removable tabs so everything's welded make the brake solid welded mounts and uh and three eighths axles because i i hate running adapters so it and, was kind of weird and you have a background in welding which is kind of why it was a easy thing to transition that's, to that's correct i'm a i'm a union pipe fitter or steam fitter by trade and the welding is different than what i'm used to we do heavy wall x-ray welding and a lot of walking the cup anybody who's a welder will know you put the torch down and roll the cup back and forth and you push a lot of metal where this is dipping and pulsing and you know going real slow we're in more of a production speed setting but the quality was there so it was just the the change in welding from heavy to thin and um, most of the thin wall we did was you know fusion welding stainless very thin you don't add wire you just fuse it together and penetrate through the back and uh, so it's this is a little different than what I'm used to, so. But it was an easy, curve. it was an easy transition to do that. Yeah, the the welds getting them smooth, you know, like guys like uh, Ted James and uh, TJD on Instagram, and Mike with Dutch Bikes, and Mike Laird. Everybody knows, you know, these guys are very good welders, and you watch them, and their welds are looking great, and it's uh, you know, mine are smooth, and they're good quality but they're not quite a Mike Laird weld yet but every frame it gets better because it's a learning curve so I think I have um, I built two street frames for some guys with weird geometry um, Frello bikes Danny at, um, at Frello helped me out with some pieces to build my fixtures and he's a he's a machinist and he um, made heat sinks for me so it made it possible so I built him a frame and um, I don't have any, I don't think any of those guys are here, but so. And another thing I wanted to get to too was like the, how do you do stuff like the head tube and the bottom bracket and stuff? I actually purchased those because I'm not a machinist. So um, Aaron at Solid, he, he still sells, you know, Solid doesn't make bikes anymore, but they make head tubes, um, bottom brackets, dropouts, just random, bike making parts and also S&M makes them but I I, I go through solid because you know Aaron from back in the day and you know I like their he has a shark fin in the in the bottom bracket so it's just an extra piece in the center to stiffen it up keep it strong but light so I purchased some from him I have somebody who's going to start making them locally that I know but as far as it wouldn't be efficient for me to make them do you do any kind of like heat treating to them at all or anything? No, a lot of the tubing, um, 
bike manufacturers with their tubing, like whether it's Verawall or Velospec or Columbus, any of those, or Reynolds, they design their tubing so that when it's welded, it essentially does not need a um, to be heat treated, which is weird because the chrome molly we did in industrial, it would get welded and then stress relieved, and then it would be good. Where bike frames, I was kind of baffled to hear the weld wire that they use, you know, 70S wire on a chrome molly tubing, that's, you know, it's the lower grade, which is odd to me. And then there's also like weld mold wire, um, just different types of weld wire that you can use. Um, Reynolds, I know, has a bunch of different stuff for their different tubes. And, but I, I don't do any heat treating on them. I just, I build them and keep them in the jig while they're getting built. But I build the rear ends, those pieces, weld them out and then put them into the jig so there's not a whole lot of stress and then they're mitered to sit right on so there's essentially they drop in and then you just weld them out it's, it's kind of neat it's been getting more and more efficient as I build more I think there's another frame out we could look at that at my buddy Dan he's a street guy built him a custom frame it's rated five pounds and Matt Copeland I just built him a frame with light Reynolds tubing and his is like Four point, like 4.2 pounds or something like that. Four pounds, two ounces, I can't remember. But it's, you know, Matt wanted a light bike, so I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll try it. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, what's so significant about the whole Matt Copeland thing, and Alex has already heard this story a million times, but Matt's been riding the exact same frame, but just different iterations of it, like new ones he stocked up, basically. And I think it was all FBM frames. Yep. He stocked up on the exact same custom FBM frame for however many years. I mean, it was a long time. So, like, part of the reason I wanted to talk with Alex is not only because he's awesome, but because he built the frame that Matt Copeland moved to after 10 or however many years of <laughs> FBMs. And that's, like, that's kind of a significant thing in my eyes. Because that, I thought it was cool when Matt, he's like, oh, yeah. You know, I thought he was joking wanting a frame. And it was awesome because I think... Matt's been hooking me up, you know, just giving me a good deal on profile stuff. And uh, whether it's when I was riding a lot, the grassroots, you know, team are getting hooked up with stuff. So Matt's been hooking me up since I was like 16 and I'm 38 now. So it's it's been quite a bit of time and, you know, always looking up to Matt. So it was, it was exciting to build him a frame, you know, and ride with him all the time. Matt's awesome. Can't really, you know, anybody who knows Matt knows. <laughs> yeah they know i mean he's just a very yeah. awesome person who's also really particular about what he's putting on his bike and when i heard that he had you make a frame i was just like wow that's amazing matt had very specific dimensions and he said they they all all the frames were the same and he had crandall making them for him and him and crandall were real tight and uh and he's like i don't know what i'm gonna do you know when fbm stopped making bikes he's like you know he's like i don't know what i'm gonna ride but he had he keeps he gets a new bike every year because he doesn't like the stress on him but for one of the smoothest riders around there's very little stress on a mat bike you know he's, mm. everything he does is just perfect so yeah but. so how long have you been riding that one this one is probably longer than you should ride a frame i guess now that i actually think about it and build them and see how thin the tubes actually are but this is over over two years on this frame it doesn't really look like it but the powder coat is really good and um, I use a good powder coater for what I my normal job and uh, so it, it's held up really good it's just now starting to look like I beat on it you know but <laughs> two years not very bad absolutely and uh, do you have plans to like open this up to do them more I I do and do and don't um, you know I we were talking about it um, a friend of mine, Dan, we're going to start, we're not really sure what it is yet, but out to cruise, just anything, just everybody having a good time on whatever, just cruising on a bike, skateboards, it doesn't matter. And then probably a branch off company would be, you know, running batch frames, you know, and try to keep the price down. You know, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of profit in a frame made in the States, but you know, it's more or less a labor of love. So we we'd build some frames and run a batch of frames or something, you know, just made in the States and at a price point, you know, that's about the same as regular frames. Cause 
the tubing getting, you know, you know, I see all these guys get big batches of tubing and it's like gold, you know, some of these top tubes are like $40, you know, just for a top tube. And it's like, if, if you actually think about it, you're like, wow, there's really nothing. You're not making anything, you know, you may get $8 an hour to build a frame, <laughs> you know? So <laughs> that's, uh, it's, it'd be pretty cool, but uh, custom frames, I'm doing them just for like guys I know and you know there are a lot of guys that I'm at, and I don't want anybody to take this bad that I know but there are a lot of guys I'm stoked on or really enjoy riding with and um, I'd like to build everyone a frame that I know you know what I mean but a lot of guys I'm I got a few guys on the list that we're building frames for so it's just you know whether they're old friends or just people who were shredders I didn't want it to become a job but it's like now that I see more people on my frames it's it's rewarding, you know, I can only imagine like, like um, the guys, you know, the big frame builders, like I said, Dutch, Laird, um, TJD, they, uh, or Ted James, like how those guys feel seeing their bikes like on TV, you know, Daniel Dares going crazy or, you know, whoever it may be, you know what I mean? Like, I'm pretty sure most of the Olympic riders ride Laird frames, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's gotta be an awesome feeling to to see that so like the more I see my frames out there people riding them the more excited I get to build more and I, I geek out on the jigs so like I you know I think on Matt's frame it took me a month to build it because my jigs weren't efficient so I'd like go down a rabbit hole and then realize I didn't do anything at all all day except for build jigs and then <laughs> and you know just getting a milling machine and a nice mill I, I like old tooling and equipment and my bridge boards from like 62 or 63 or something like that and uh, so I just fall into the rabbit hole with tooling and making stuff and then getting sidetracked but when it's not your job it's it's cool because you can you can get sidetracked and enjoy it more than having to just go to the grind and you know knock them all out yeah so ho hopefully we get some more coming out but I want to build like a batch or a run and you know maybe uh, I'd like to build more street frames because I feel like a lot of them are park frames and the street guys, they don't really have many custom bikes. You know, I, I custom ordered some down tubes, 049 wall thickness and uh, inch and a half, not too big, you know, and uh, they seem to not really dent, which is a perk when we were street riding and I tried to, you know, a little out of shape, tried to pedal pick this tall rail and slam my down tube and everybody, oh, there's the first dent, you know. Ran their ha hand down it and no dents. And they're like, I want that down too, you know? And it was just like, all right, you know? Most bike tubes are like 035 is, you know, and everybody butts them really crazy thin. And so a lot of street guys, it really doesn't appeal to them. But I had to custom order tubing from uh, from VeloSpec uh, 049. So you gotta order a bunch of tubing just to get that because it's not a real desirable but I think a five pound range frame you know like plus or minus an ounce or so is a good weight you know it's, it seems durable you can get real light but you know what I mean with with how younger generation is now if you break something then it's like oh that was garbage but it's you know it's going to break everything is going to break so now if you broke it and it was my fault then I'd be like oh wow hey yeah <laughs> this is my fault, but I'm pretty sure every frame builder knows, you know, what what could have been their fault or a material failure, and it's things that are out of their control, you know. But do whatever you can to make it right. Yeah, man. So, if you ever do a batch or anything like that, where could somebody stay tuned to see that? Um, we were gonna start um, an Instagram and just start posting more frames up. Um, I just didn't know if I wanted to do it under the the LPK name. The name's the hard part. That's really what uh what we're doing because I didn't want it. LPK came as a joke. We were riding the ramp and the guys were like, "Oh, where's that LPK frame at?" And then it was funny because you know I, I didn't have a name for my own business, so it's like LPK, you know. But it's my last name is L E P A K, so I just LPK, you know. But I didn't want to. I'm not that, I don't want to call anybody vain or anything by any means, but I, I don't want to see my name on people's bikes. 
You know, I put this LPK bridge on here as a joke, and it was just kind of funny to see if I could do it, and then I didn't even expect it to hold up because this bridge is put together like garbage, and it's not very structurally strong, but it, it's got the pierced top tube, and um, you know, so that makes it a little more rigid. I'm pretty sure that's the only reason it's lasted, but two years, and you know, I think it's only held together this little tiny bit, so it's really, or I just underestimate Chromalia, one or the other, you know? <laughs> but, It'll I'll, be out hopefully there. Hopefully we can have a something out and I can get that to you, but I think the name is the hard part, so we're going to start without the cruise and get some shirts going, and uh, we're going to design some sprockets and get some dash guards, a couple ideas, you know, nothing, not reinventing the wheel, but just something cool, you know what I mean? Maybe people can get behind. Awesome, man. Well, this is cool. I love seeing this stuff. So, Alex, thank you. Thank this you. is a really cool little chat. Appreciate and, uh, you talking to me. Thanks for showing everybody and talking about your bike. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. Sorry about the rambling. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching, everybody. Check out Alex's stuff. It's really cool. Subscribe here if you haven't. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.